Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Control. I'm gonna trouble you one more time with uh, with some more side missions because, well, honestly, I'm not sure what order I should be doing these in because I don't know when this main story is just gonna end. I know that it does continue after the end because I've since learned that one DLC will start after we've completed it, but the other, I think, is active now, and I'm gonna go for it. But before I start messing with side missions again, one of you told me that I should have a look at the screens where I found the NSC document. Northmore Sar... Northmore Sarcophagus Container. Internal movement detected. Does this mean what I think it means? Because, look, I, I was, like, suspecting that this is all, per like, powered by some forsaken person with extraordinary abilities. I didn't know who. Now, look, I don't remember the circumstances around this exactly, but I do remember that Trench ordered this shortly, it said, before Northmore's, well, cessation of having that role. I'm going to have to read back through some of the documents to finally understand how this all fits together, but that is absolutely insane. But right now I'm here in Central Research because uh, I really want the opportunity to complete one of these uh, one of these bureau alerts. I'm not going to be able to get you from here. My goal now is to destroy his nodes, and I can see some just over yonder. Oh. It actually works. That is so cool. Uh, I wonder... Oh, I wonder where those will actually be. This whole thing turns into a playground once you get Levitate. Oh, there's another. Oh, we've got to keep an eye out. There we are. You guys are not going to make this easy, are you? <laughs> well, I suppose it'll be kind of easy. Hang on. I need you, big boy, to just keep dying. Oh, more of you. That's all right. We can deal with these uh, things right quick these days. And no more protection for you. Smash. And smash where a goddess. I actually find myself using spin far less these days. It's like anything I can't do with, uh, what do you call it, um, with pierce, I just end up doing with throwing. I can't speak during these battles! I didn't expect one of you. Okay, spin for you guys. Destroyed. Oh, just how many of these things are there going to be? This is a huge space. And where can they be? Are they all going to be in the central chamber? There you are. I see, I see mold walking around in the windows up there. That's a good hit. <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, there's time still. Still plenty of time. But, yeah, I just wish I knew where the boundaries were, you know? And that music suggests some more are still out here. Get out of here, you! And we did it! Complete one bureau alert. I'm not sure what we actually get for that, but... Boy, is it satisfying. I just love how many, like, little side missions there are. How many big side missions there are that are so rich with story and content. And the fact that it, like, dynamically generates stuff for you is something I always appreciate. And it doesn't do all of one or the other. Also, I have, like, at long la- I tabbed out. Oh, the game paused when you tab out. Excellent! 
even got to watch that rocket go by. I have at long last, like, understood just from watching myself play how to dodge these rockets. You literally, you just have to move. Doesn't even necessarily have to be. So a control dodge will probably dodge entirely. Just running to the side, you'll probably avoid most damage. Hey, there's stuff in the director's office. Oh, and I see we moved Trench's body. I wouldn't have thought there was any reason to come back here. Also, was that there before? Hang on. I just haven't really explored this area at all. Bureau funding. Tall executive staff. I know there's some concern regarding our operations exceeding the annual budget. So long as we operate within the oldest house, we are obscured from scrutiny in many respects. If our budget demands are not exorbitant to the point of drawing attention, they will be granted by the Treasury without question. The FBC is just another line in another spreadsheet that some lowly accountant won't even notice. Their eyes will skip over us as if we weren't even there. The nature of the oldest house allows us certain freedoms in how we operate. Our being here is no accident. Just another stamp. And yet somehow that just seems so typical. What is this? Have we been here before? Oh, no, I remember where this is. Okay. Butte Supplement. According to their testimony, the agents had been transported from the Butte home to a roadside motel named the Ocean View Motel and Casino and discovered a room key by performing a ritual. The key opened a door marked with an inverted black pyramid, which they only learned after a lengthy period of trial and error. After pulling another motel cord found inside this room, they were transported to the oldest house. The disappearances of the home's owner and the other locals of Butte have been attributed to the light switch cord. The Ocean View Motel is now known to have many doors and pathways. Since the occurrence, identical light switch cords to the one found in the Butte home have begun appearing throughout the oldest house. At the time of this lighting, however many- haven't we read this before? I'm not sure, maybe it's like, maybe it's slightly different, but I feel like this is stuff we've seen before. Here's an old security door we can open with a document. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Potts, I regret to inform you that your son, Graham Potts, was killed in active duty this past week. While the details surrounding his death are classified, I am honored to tell you that he died in the service of his country. You can be proud of his courage in the face of danger and his commitment to protecting our nation against our enemies. He will be remembered by his comrades and colleagues. I sincerely regret the pain this message will bring you. Take some solace in knowing that his sacrifice helped protect the country he loves so much. His effects will be returned to you with all speed. That's, that's the note that uh, there were several other documents warning uh, against using certain words and phrases, right? How did I know there'd be more documents in here? Timeline of events. Analysis of his threat part four. To examine the invasion's timeline of events for possible patterns in his behavior. Establishing a timeline is difficult at present because of lack of reliable communications between bureau sectors and staff. Preliminary models indicate ground zero of the invasion is located within the sector. Once it becomes possible to interview surviving personnel, pinpointing the exact location should be feasible. Other outstanding questions that a timeline may answer. How did the Hiss get past the internal lockdown? How does Hiss resonance advance through space? Deliberately or uniformly? What is their ultimate goal? The outside world? A cross-dimensional destination? I'm not sure, but we're getting closer. Now this quest right here, investigate the sector elevator. It has a very interesting title, A Dark Place. And I can't help but think back like years to when some of you were asking me to play this game. And it is certainly reminding me of another game by the same developer, so maybe we'll see about that in this episode? Hang on, what do we what do we do with the sector elevator? That's how I came back here. Trying to make her act. It was a distress call. 
Faden sensed a drowning man. A hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? Okay, we're really just this doing out. this? It just uh, it just up and starts. I, I was honestly expecting like menu options or something for these things. I only just found out that they're part of the main game and then you hit me with this? Okay, we're doing the Helen Wake DLC. I'm guessing, look, there's two DLCs. I don't remember what one's called, but I remember one is simply titled AWE. <laughs> and I was joking with Elster the other night that that means Alan Wake expansion. I didn't realize it actually does. Ah, uh, okay, um... Investigation sector. This really is a dark place. a lot of reading to be done, but wow, this is like the first seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the bureau. Yeah, I mean, this is actually a somewhat reasonably sized room, although a bit tall. But why is it like this? This doesn't look like his. Mr. Kirkland, this is from 2017. Here are the latest agents confirmed missing, presumed dead from the containment breach yesterday. Agent Jonathan Connor, Ezra Cruz, Caroline Dempsey, Lindsay Malcolm, Charles Murray, and Derek Shaw. Letters of condolences will be delivered to you to sign prior to sending them to their families. It will be updated as soon as additional confirmations are made. Also, per your request, a network engineer checked how many cases were backed up digitally. Unfortunately, a large number of active investigations were not archived yet, and the only hard copies of reports exist behind the fire break. They're lost, I'm afraid. So behind the fire break is considered just lost. I guess that means the sector is as well. Was this maybe considered to be gone even before the hiss? Polaris, you're guiding me. Tractor supplement. Uh, note, miscommunication led to a local coroner examining the body of William Burrow. So this is the wrong person? 33-year-old man found dead on his property. Per police report, Remains obtained for a coroner's office also include blood, urine, bile, stomach contents, and bone fragments, blunt force injuries to the head, lacerations to the left ear and cheek, blunt force injury to the extremities, a dislocation of the right knee, complete avulsion of the right upper extremity with associated fracture of the proximal right humerus, extensive trauma to the abdominal region, a complete avulsion of multiple organs, including stomach, heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, and portions of the large and small intestine, all missing from the scene, totally mutilated. It's my opinion that Mr. Burrow's death is not the result of a mechanical accident, as claimed by authorities. The removal of organs is consistent with animal attack. So this was only acquired in 2019, so the miscommunication is the fact that they got to examine him. Resignation Letter 2019 To whom it may concern, it is with great anger and regret that I tender my resignation as head of investigations at the FBC. I do this in protest of the rampant disregard for my department's something. My staff cannot continue to work in these conditions. Previous requests and warnings have fallen on deaf ears, so I must now rely on my actions to speak louder than my words ever could. I blame this situation on our something, who has routinely ignored requests for assistance in reclaiming the parts of the investigation sector lost to the something loose inside. I will never forget the screams of the brave agents begging us to open that fire break. I will carry that shame for the rest of my days. The some position has failed his agents. I shall never forgive him for that. Maybe talking about Trench? We can pull that, but do we really want to? Oh, so much reading, so much reading. Darling investigation. 
Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, internal investigation was launched into the ethical practices of Casper Darling. Despite the amounts of anonymous something regarding inhumane treatment of someone currently housed in the Bureau, our official findings regarding this were inconclusive. Numerous obstacles arose during this investigation. The majority of sector personnel seemed to be wholly unaware of any such someone contained there. One something confirmed the code name to be something, but all files pertaining to that name were inaccessible, being classified under the highest clearance level. Investigators were similarly blocked from entering the something research wing to interview its staff. The matter was further complicated by the lack of clarity on whether non-human paranatural entities warrant humane treatment. So it's non-human. While that rules out Alan and, uh, and Dylan, while this investigation cannot address any charges against Dr. Darling, we do recommend an investigation into something research. Casey inquiry? Is this maybe... Hmm. Mr. Denis, a request came through recently from an FBI agent asking for all our files on Bright Falls specifically on the disappearance of the author, Alan Wake. Per the Interagency Information Exchange Agreement, I had some paper pushers gather up a folder of all pre-approved files. Don't worry, all the inappropriate material is either missing or redacted. But I'm writing to let you know that we received this request from a special agent, Alex Casey. Sounds familiar, right? That's because Alex Casey is the name of the fictional detective in those hard-boiled crime books Alan Wake wrote. Pretty interesting that an FBI agent sharing a name with the most famous character Wake Road is looking into a case dealing with the writer's fiction coming true. I think this is worth looking into. What's your opinion? Just give the word and I'll start surveillance on this guy. Didn't they- okay, in- okay, if we're doing this, all spoilers I was withholding are gonna have to go out the window in this part, so <laughs> I guess buckle up. I think they mentioned in Alan Wake 2 that the Bureau was aware of Alex Casey, but in this case, it almost seems like he may perhaps be a written manifestation that actually lingered, where earlier reports from the time of the event itself seemed to indicate that all of it was temporary. Uh, staffing issue. Mr. Denis, so yeah, there's an increase in AWE cases, and yes, it would be a good idea to put together a special task force to examine exactly why that is. However, it seems that a tiny little detail has slipped through the cracks. We don't have the staff. If you expect us to detect, investigate, and process more AWE cases, you need to give us more people. It's simple math. Between the staff we lost in the Hartman thing and the ones who left for other departments after Kirkland quit, we're barely managing to keep up with the workload. Just filing the paperwork for all the altered items we left behind in the sector has been an ordeal. Another thing, and this is going to sound paradoxical, but we do have an overcrowding situation. This lobby isn't meant to accommodate a whole sector's worth of staff. We put forward a motion to move investigations to a more suitable location months ago. It better not still be sitting on your desk. The people are getting restless, and as Kirkland's interim replacement, it's your job to handle it. Agent Grayson, so... Wow, these guys talk like, uh, the nagging advisors in a strategy game. Do we want to go in there? This whole place was lost potentially months ago. I think we go upstairs first. Man, it's really taking me like half an hour just to get through this lobby. Cauldron Lake update! To Chief Investigator Denis. It happened again. Third time this year. Something certainly has it out for our something. Could be raccoons. The locals certainly complain about them enough. But why would raccoons keep going after a monitoring station? Doesn't add up. Anyway, I've got a bureau tech going to the site next week to take a look. Next on the list of recurring problems is the staff at the Lake House Research Station. How am I supposed to effectively keep an eye on Cauldron Lake if they won't let me see any data? I don't even know what they're researching out there. We need to petition them again to share their info with investigations agents. It's only a matter of time before it hits again, and I want to be prepared. Anyway, if anyone at HQ asks why the Bright Falls report is a little thin this month, tell them it's because we couldn't take any readings. In the meantime, I might invest in some raccoon traps. Sincerely, Agent Estevez. 
the monitoring station we saw, and we know, I'm just going to spoil Alan Wake 2 in this, I warned you, was probably being sabotaged by Ilmo in his little visits with the tech. Director investigation. Uh, wow, this is all redacted. Investigation was launched into Zachariah Trench. A recent change in something witnessed in Director Trench, including aggressive behavior when something with other staff has been observed. However, this investigation is aimed at interpreting the issue rather than proving it. Notable, maybe tension between Director Trench and Darling has been witnessed by numerous Bureau staff, although both declined to meet for an interview on the matter. Witness accounts suggest their arguments center around the dimensional research wing and the something kept inside. However, no evidence exists to confirm Trench's something as anything more than interpersonal disagreements. The investigation has concluded that Trench's behavior is not indicative of any something and that his fitness to lead is not in question. However, there was enough of a lack of confidence to investigate, and that's notable. Is that a space helmet? Why is there a space helmet here? Hang on. Official warning from Trench. Kirkland, I'm growing tired of your blatant attempts to lay your incompetence at my doorstep. I know you want this to be true, but you are head of investigations. This failure is your responsibility. What did you think would happen holding a dangerous specimen in investigations? The containment sector exists for a reason. They are better trained and better equipped for this type of work. In fact, they've admirably taken on certain AWE monitoring responsibilities that your staff are no longer capable of. This happens more and more now. And don't think your petty internal investigations have gone past my notice. You are a worm. Everything I've done has been for the benefit of the Bureau. The Prime Candidate program only failed because of Darling. You are both failures, plotting against me. You are traitors, but the truth will emerge out of you. You are choosing to become my enemy, Kirkland. You don't want to be. This is not a good state for the Bureau to be in. Everybody must have been grateful for me to show up. That might be why they were so... Might be why they were so accepting. Underhill background. Dr. Raya Underhill is a professor at the University of Woodrow in the United Kingdom, where she teaches biology with a focus on botany, and is also awful. Dr. Underhill once worked with the Bureau as a parabotanist stationed in the research sector of the oldest house. She served with no incidents or demerits and is praised by those who formerly worked with her, including Dr. Darling. So it's just me she's rude with? Dr. Underhill has no known connections to paracriminal organizations or any record of breaching her NDAs since leaving the Bureau. Her civilian behavior has been ideal, with the exception of an ongoing personal relationship with Dr. Darling, which appears to have begun during their time as co-workers in the research sector and revisited intermittently ever since. Depending on the duration of her work in the oldest house, it may be required to have both parties sign a relationship clearance form. The investigation has found no compelling reason to deny Dr. Darling's request to offer Underhill an interim position with the aim of finding a solution to the mold threshold issue. <sighs> Good God. But there's still the matter of the room over there and that barricaded entrance. Wow, this really is the Alan Wake DLC because we are reading a book today. Keystone inspection. Mr. Kirkland. We stopped at Keystone on our way to the target AWE like you asked. I'm sending my report directly to you to try and keep a lid on this Grumman Morales desertion issue. We didn't find any sign of them here. Given their records, it's possible they switched teams like you suspected, but I don't think that's the case. An event definitely occurred here in Keystone, and I think Grumman and Morales got caught up in it. The entire population has vanished into thin air. Reminds me of the ordinary case, but that was just the adults if I'm remembering the file correctly. This is different. I think our guys are casualties, not traitors. If it was an AWE, it seems to be over. We walked through the whole town, and the only strange thing we noticed were markings on various buildings. Two overlapping circles with a dot in the shared space. Could be unrelated. I'll show you the pictures when I get back. In the meantime, you should send a team out here to cordon this place off and maybe get the comms guys working on a cover story. Two overlapping circles with a dot in the shared space. 
I'm trying to think if that's something we've seen before. I honestly am drawing a blank. I see where we need to bring that power. But my, my first place to look would be inside the ocean view. You know, like on one of the doors, but actually now that I'm realizing the ocean view was the name of the hotel in the dark place in Alan Wake 2. Oh my god, that, hmm. But it presented so differently there. Which leads me wild with all sorts of theories because Jessie said that it looked like every motel she had ever seen. But Alan is from New York, so maybe it actually presents differently depending on the observer. Okay, 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 there is so much. This is the benefit of a shared universe, because things like this enhance other aspects of other stories without being necessary to understand them. Alright, uh, blah blah blah, legality of prime candidate program. Since all known subjects relevant to the investigation used executive privilege to, design, to decline interviews, very little first-hand information was gathered. However, anonymous sources and documentation declassified by Kirkland both paint an alarmingly clear picture of systematic something brought into the oldest house and placed under examination and testing with the aim of appointing one as director upon maturity. That is good old P6. This program has produced no successful cases and only resulted in traumatic something of paranaturally inclined individuals. Not only is this in breach of the Ash Act, but it flies in the face of basic human decency. So this project always had a ton of opposition, and uh, it seems like Darling himself started to doubt it. Burrow Tractor Containment Procedure. Item is not in Bureau custody, so none known. A Frank Elk Tractor, Olive Green. Dried blood on the grill when last seen. Item is capable of vocalized responses, or growls, and unmanned locomotion. Considered highly aggressive and dangerous. It's a Christine. The item first came to the Bureau's attention after the death of William Burrow, owner of Burrow Farm outside of Trenton, Texas. Local authorities arrived on scene after an employee found the mutilated body of Mr. Burrow beneath the tractor. Police arrived, but were immediately driven away by the tractor. Panic calls to federal authorities were intercepted by Bureau Com staff, and a team was dispatched. Upon arrival, the agents approached the item. It responded by, quote, growling like a bear. Three agents were injured when they tried to detain the item, which escaped. Aerial searches for the item are ongoing. Speaking to Mrs. Burrow only revealed that she had a domestic altercation with Mr. Burrow earlier the night of the incident. Whether these events are connected is currently unknown. Uh, so much room for speculation, and it's so refreshing to have a document that's not entirely redacted. I mean, just think. Maybe it was his anger that caused the item to be imbued with those traits. I mean, we know that we know that the mental state of people can even bring items into existence. Don't like that going off. <laughs> and the worst part about that one is just knowing that there's a demonic tractor just out there somewhere. Now that gate should open. I hadn't even tried to open it yet, so that's fine. Oh look, you had one more piece of reading material for me. Specimen Escape Assessment. The purpose of internal investigation is to examine the containment failure of Specimen SI-1 that resulted in the deaths of a number of agents. An inspection report of the containment equipment three days earlier showed no faults. Investigators suspect human error to be the cause, yet no department has provided any evidence to support this. Technicians were able to recover the researcher's notes on the specimen from the internal network. The specimen began displaying a sharp increase in aggressive something. Cross-referencing that date with various logs found only two events inconsistent with the sector's daily routine. The air filters were changed, and an hour prior to the incident, a civilian named Alice Wake, perhaps, entered the sector regarding an unrelated investigation. Given their connection to the same AWE case, this is connected to, to Cauldron Lake. It's likely that Mrs. Wake's presence is re relevant to the specimen's escape. 
Let's get in there. It loves to live in darkness. Oh, I so need this control point. Well, I mean... <sighs> I'm no detective, but something definitely happened here. Alex is. Oh, we should give him a call. Blessed organization. This group or individual has operated outside of the Bureau's notice for decades, perhaps longer, displaying a level of skill and caution rarely seen in paracriminal groups. A review of past cases has found various mentions of their activity over the years. In 2016, a production company called Blessed Pictures was connected to an altered item case, as well as the death of an agent from exposure to illicit paranatural materials. In 1994, a Los Angeles-based public speaker named Chester Bless was involved in the illegal use of an altered item. In 1988, a business called Blessed Repair and Service was suspected of involvement with an object of power case perhaps even creating it. None of these businesses or individuals have ever been located. However, their connection to appearances of altered items and objects of power is too direct to be considered circumstantial. An arrest order has been issued for any persons believed to be involved with the Blessed Organization. I'm not sure that's familiar to me. It feels like it should be. Oh, we have to move beyond the fire break. Of course, they said that. Do we know each other? I feel... This feels familiar. I can't seem to... I've forgotten it. I'm sorry. I'm... My name is Alan Wick. Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom. The poet. The diver. You, you look different. That was just a, a role. A character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker. An old terror like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. You need a drink. Darling. And that's a spiral. Through the spiral doorway. That was Alan Wake, the writer who went missing in that AWE case I read about. What's he doing here? And Thomas Zane was with him. The poet. No, wait. D -d he was a filmmaker. I, I always remember that wrong. You're being affected. 
in Alan Wake 2, they sort of they sort of like retconned it to say that he was a filmmaker instead of a poet, that it, the dive suit was just a character he played in a movie. And, uh, well, they actually changed it in a couple of ways. So uh, it's so confusing to think about and unravel multiple games like this at the same time. But it's hard to talk about it. But that change that was made is affecting us years later and on the other side of the country. There is, oh, there is so much, mm, this is so cool. And look, imagine this from the perspective of somebody playing this game when this DLC came out. You haven't seen or heard anything about Alan Wake in years by this point. It seemed like the sequel was essentially vaporware, and then they come out with this? Unbelievable, and I'm amazed at how much of this ties so directly into Alan Wake 2. And I'll tell you one other thing I'm thinking of. Now I'm already a little rusty on the details of Alan Wake 2, but I've been getting a refresher because Elster is playing through it right now. And, you know, we've just kind of been talking while she plays and sharing ideas and theories, and she actually just casually mentioned at one point Alan talking about the red-haired woman. And I remembered that he did say that, and mmm! Okay, uh, yep, 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 yep. It is right here. Doors to other dimensions, universes, maybe not, unless... You actually do consider Alan Wake to be a different, shared universe. Which is such a weird way to think about things. This is- I'm sorry, my speculation brain is just going wild in these rooms. <laughs> Something very weird is going on outside. We've never seen it dark like this before, but there's like a red tinge as we approach. Good timing, Bureau Alert, but I don't think that pertains to what's going on right now. Thank you for scaring me, though. Pistachios and pretzels, but in very bland wrappers. And... Ooh, the doors are all open. What is it that it wants me to understand? That was all. I just had to silence the noise. <laughs> I know we should be fearing the darkness. Dr. Emil Hartman, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Broke loose. Killed everyone it could. Lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came. A resonance. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. A resonance? Did he really get taken and then hissed? It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Alright, let's, uh, I'm, I'm gonna look at that. I know I've been neglecting the hotline. Dr. Emil Hartman was desperate. The Federal Bureau of Control had stolen his life's work. This was his last chance, his final experiment. What he'd been too scared to do before. Hartman dove into the lake, was taken, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Only an echo of him remained, fragmented impulses on autoplay, violent, bloodthirsty darkness in the driver's seat. Emerging from the lake, the thing was captured by the FBC. Brought in, contained, studied. The thing broke loose, killed everyone it could. The FPC fell back and sealed the sector. The thing was alone in the dark, lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came. Not darkness, but similar enough. A sound, a resonance. It shouldn't be a surprise. If there's one, why not another? The darkness inside the thing could have been immune, could have resisted, fought, could have been passed by, passed through with no effect. But it didn't and it wasn't. 
Maybe it had grown weaker over time, not aged. It was timeless. A weaker with no link to its source. A metamorphosis followed. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. I'm not sure you knew about the FBC in Alan Wake 2. So, is this something you simply don't remember? Something that may have been guided? I don't know. Either way, we're moving beyond the fire break and hopefully we can fix whatever mess you've created within the Bureau itself. The bridge is destroyed. Well, tell you what we can do. I'm pretty sure I have upgrades ready to be applied, and, and maybe we can increase our levitate duration, because I don't feel good about that. So we can upgrade that for two points. We have, Wow, we've got a lot. Um, hmm, seize an additional enemy? Maybe we'll take that. Uh, but plus 20% energy is also good. Okay, we'll, we'll seize an additional enemy next time. This more energy seems more relevant in the moment. All right, Jesse, let's leap for our lives. Hmm, will we be able to make it through there? No, we will not. And there's an astral being down there. Uh, if we can bean it with this rock, no? Maybe we can get it to slow down enough? Oh, this is going to be some wild platforming. Oh, you are not going to be happy when I arrive. Hopefully we have enough distance. Yeah, I think we're going to make it. You'll start to drop little by little. I hope there's not a sudden stop at the end. See what I did there? Where you go down all the way. Great, we shot you in the wrong direction. Come on, this way. We're gonna take a little bit of damage going over you. Oh wow, we didn't. Yep. And through here. No, no such luck. We need to get down there. Okay, let's use some of our energy to... Ooh. Ooh. Oh my. Oh, you poor soul. My god, you are so close. Auntie, you, uh, you missed a spot. No, it is hiss down here. There you go. Wow, that didn't even kill you. You had a lot of health. Be damp and abandoned. Why did Wake want me to come here? I'm sure we can dig up something. All the objects are moving around. Actually, uh, man, it is so dark. That doesn't look like a house shift. Do I even want to know? That's a very good question. It's spontaneous and sudden. Look at this. Items duplicating and just clipping through each other. I think this place has a bad connection. We gotta be really careful because this is the DLC. Remember, it's made for people who may have completed the main game, so now's where it might be trying to pull tricks. Filing and processing. There's another control point that needs to be taken right over there, nope. Maybe it's just the equipment, because there's one right here. Die, and die. Oh, you don't, you don't. Die, die, die. 
Die, die. Oh, wow. Level 7 security guards. I'm not used to you guys being this tough. Oop. Not used to accidentally grabbing objects this big, but it's certainly welcome when you guys bunch up like that. Careful, there's a wet floor. Oh, my God. Okay, good thing I rounded this corner. But we are tearing through them as usual. Oh. Of course, the hiss are already in here. The question is, are they the only things? Confiscated motive. Oh, it's just so cool how, like, vague everything is. Uh, foot gossip. Hello. My feet gossip at night, and now I have to wear shoes to bed. Sincerely, me. Honestly, why isn't Bono singing a concert for you? Hartman Arrest. They got him. He's what's loose in here, isn't he? I had thought that we fought him at the end of his segment of Alan Wake 1, but some of you told me that that wasn't actually him, that was his orderly. Uh, Denis, Special Agent Remy. Uh, kidnapping of altered individuals, count one. Sanctions against altered organizations, one count. Obstruction of Bureau investigation, one count. Breaching the Ash Act, six counts. Offender's property seized as evidence to be used in conjunction with an ongoing AWE investigation. Offender's personal effects have been sent to research for analysis. After being cleared by Bureau researchers, all victims have been released. Biannual surveillance orders were assigned to each, except for the Anderson brothers due to their senility, and Wake, possibly deceased. You know, I think there was a document in Alan Wake 2 about surveillance of Rose. This is barricaded, and we cannot get through. A floodlight just right here. And another one of these pictures right here, like the one we saw at the turntable on the way to the ordinary AWE. Whoa. Looks like the house has gotten a little wild in here. Not wild in any way it hasn't before. Service tunnel. Oh, I was going to say it's collapsed. That's not a collapse. Hang on. Oh, we can't pick up the wet floor sign. And things appear to go right through. This darkness is blocking the door. So now I have to deal with an interdimensional noise and sentient shadows. We actually have to deal with this Alan Wake style. That is so cool. Uh, I, I was worried it was going to be like, you know, suddenly we deal with it using our mechanics, which I guess we still will be able to. It's just, you know, it's kind of hard to imagine Jesse Faden having any sort of trouble with the Alan Wake combat. Take this with us, although I imagine we'll be able to find lights all over. And even here it's able to cause trouble. Alright, uh, levitate. That. Can we make it onto there? No, we cannot. We need to climb on top of something. And find this horribly mutilated body, or maybe it's just been so long that it's fully decomposed. Let's find out if that pill we were given enable us to walk through here. Yep. Are you really gonna make me break you? It does. Oh, we have so much we have to go back and look for. Ah, oh, this is so exciting. Okay, but at least we can explore this area in full. Yep. Shaded facet. Okay, but that does seem to be all. What are these things? Oh, it must have to do with the mold. And the fact that this stuff has gotten down here, despite only arriving four months ago, and this area being sealed off for so long, that can't be a good thing, can it? Oh no. 
Every time I see a tunnel like this, I get flashbacks to the clog. Oh my god. Are you serious? That's what he's become. He's been... Oh wow. He's been in that state for literally years. They brought it back. They actually brought it back. This is one of those cases where the documents and the reality kind of clash and in different combinations depending on how much of the Alan Wake lore you played through. Either way, this is enthralling. This is so cool. And, you know, it's weird because Alan Wake 1 built up this sense of dread leading to the confrontation with Hartman that never came. It's kind of weird to see it realized all these years later. Sounds good. I need to find another generator. Oh, and one of you actually pointed out, the generators that we plug into these walls are the same model for what we use during the fight towards the end of Alan Wake 2. So that is also just like a really cool consistency. Good by now. Should I give that hotline a watch? you say that because you're essentially reminding us that it's a good thing Alan never encountered him because I don't think he could have handled it but Jesse Faden maybe another story I was thinking why would you write this and now I realize you're sending him to the right person for disposal Kirkland so you put me on desk duty just because I did the thing I was hired to do my job want to know what I call that BS Asking us to interrogate these scum without using words like altered items or AWEs or paracriminal is the stupidest thing I've heard in my life. And I've heard some stupid things. They already know the facts. They know just as much as us, if not more. And they get to sit here laughing at us while we dance around our words, trying not to leak classified terminology. They already know the terminology. If you think pulling me off the case will stop me, then think again. That piece of crap blew up those tracks. He killed those people, all to make a train turn altered. We have him dead to rights, and you need to let me back in that interrogation cell so I can get him to flip on his buddies. These people are terrorists and deserve to be treated as such. This won't stop unless we stop them. You can go ahead and put me on suspension. See if that slows me down. Agent Hewitt. Fed up with the bureaucracy, eh? Agent Fisher, day six inside the motel. Utilized surveillance methods are as follows. Fiber optic cameras slid under the individual room doors. Motion detectors in the lobby area. Tripwire, triggering a flash camera across the main entrance, even fingerprint powder on the front desk. Results are varying at best. But mostly just inconclusive and unusable. 
The footage is corrupted. Sometimes even the equipment is damaged. I don't know how exactly. I uh, I think this place is making fun of me. That's the only explanation. I, I can hear them laughing and screaming behind the closed doors. I can hear the call bell going ding multiple times a day. But when I look, there's no one there. I know I'm supposed to stay out of sight, but. I I've seen the doors closing just before I can catch even a glimpse of anyone or anything. They're messing with me, whoever they are. I think... Wait, shh. There's something. I gotta get this. Gotta get the cable out. Come on, you fiber optic fuck. Cooperate. Okay, there we go. Listening to that audio log. All right, that was faint, but I definitely heard movement coming from the hallway. I think I might have finally caught one. <laughs> the recording better work this time, or I swear to God, I'm. What? Hello? Who's there? Oh shit! I'm with the FBC. Move away from the door. I have a. Where's my? So I don't understand, you reached for your weapon and found you didn't have it? That someone really didn't like you capturing evidence of their presence? But listening to all that just echo through this abandoned, dimly lit space, the, the board completely unlit, uh, it, it just feels like we're in the middle of some old horror story that should have been left undisturbed. Black market, illegal altered item market, a black market hub specializing in the trade of occult talismans, relics, and other assorted ceremonial objects, as well as genuine altered and paranatural materials, was raided in the Czech Republic by a team of special investigators. Unsuccessful attempts by suspects to escape using altered items resulted in numerous casualties and prevented the Bureau from questioning all participants. The following interrogations revealed that not only is there a vast network of these retailers, but they seem to be gathering information on altered items and other paranormal materials from sources unknown to the Bureau. There's a there's like a whole needful things industry. The Bureau's concern here is threefold. There's a growing underground market for paranormal materials, which implies a growing awareness of their existence among a niche group of the general public. These criminal individuals do not seem aware of the item's paranormal powers, and their attempts to activate them could prove devastating if done in populated areas. And the motivations of the collectors are largely unknown. I'd be one of those people. Like, it's really not that hard to comprehend. NASA Cooperation Review! Uh, following the NASA FPC Coordination Agreement of 1972, the Bureau has provided NASA with numerous technological advancements based on our research, including the black rock lining now found in all spacefaring vessels. In return, all data gathered during space missions is made available for Bureau researchers to analyze. Recently, certain individuals have raised the concern that this relationship does not adequately benefit the Bureau, either intellectually or financially. A thorough examination of the costs accrued by both organizations has shown that the expense of NASA's recent launch of something far outweighs any spending related to the processing and delivery of BlackRock. From its medium Earth orbit, it will provide the Bureau with unparalleled resource for remotely monitoring and photographing AWE sites, a resource that would be lost if the partnership ends. It is the opinion of this committee that maintaining a cooperative relationship with our colleagues at NASA is of vital importance. I was expecting moon landing, but I guess I can dream. You here. Yep. Wait down there for me. What is all this? Thanks for the tune, Zadi. Side missions within the DLC area. Interesting. I'll have to take that later. In the meantime, I feel like we should be making this place safe. 
There we go. We need another one already. Oh, but look, more reading. Eagle Limited Summary, AWE 44. A train derailment resulting in 62 casualties and numerous injuries was suspected to have been the work of a power criminal group known as something. As a result of this event, the agents discovered that one of the cars had been altered with a persistent auditory event. It remains to be determined whether the AWE was spontaneous or the direct result of the sabotage. The Bureau has been tracking said group at the time, and the intel gathered suggested an event of this caliber was imminent in Bloomington. As a result, a response team on site was able to respond to the accident site within minutes of its occurrence. They arrived to find emergency processes underway, but also equipment left behind by the suspected group. A suspicious onlooker managed to elude agents after they attempted to make contact. Further investigation of the accident site revealed a curiously undamaged train car that exhibited an altered state when entered. The individual car was secured and transported to the investigation sector for further studies. This is in 2015 in Illinois. There's just so much. There is such a thing, I think, as too much density of information. The shadow. Wait, we've heard about this, I feel like. Paranormal entity, the shadow, is an aggressive something consisting of three known types. Localized manifestations of- Yeah, this was what- this was what they called the Dark Presence. Localized manifestations of sentient something capable of occupying organic and inorganic material, as well as exerting something over its surroundings. Shaped individuals, which are human bodies, by the shadow. These individuals become notably more aggressive, but do seem to retain something of their previous selves. Research is ongoing as to whether this condition is reversible. And shaded objects, similar to type B, except that inanimate objects are used solely as destructive tools. Each type seems to work towards a shared goal, possibly targeting certain individuals, see AWE 35, which may imply a shared link and common intelligence. The threat this entity poses warrants immediate exploration of offensive and defensive measures. The investigation sector is being outfitted with additional lighting sources, some internally powered, to prepare for the eventuality of a... something. Well, we know that that eventually came to pass. My understanding of the darkness is fragmented, incomplete. This abyss, this void, it very much does not wish to be understood. Right, you knew about it and Once you were researching it. Knowledge, then it stands to reason that darkness would equate to ignorance. By its very nature, it abhors comprehension. Of course, my own nature drives me to comprehend all. We are opposing forces, destined to collide. And given this conflict of natures, we know that the light of truth will burn away the darkness, both figuratively and literally. Any significant light source can be used as protection, even weaponry, against this metaphysical gloom. And then there are the artists. I know for a fact that Tom, Wake, the Anderson brothers, and Lane all had some involvement with the darkness. The question is whether their uncanny ability to affect reality through their art beckons the darkness, or did their work perhaps even create it? With Wake now secure in my lodge, I expect I shall grow closer to learning the answers to these questions. Assuming he cooperates, which is proving quite the challenge. Well, perseverance is the foundation of knowledge. Speaking of, I must be off on my rounds. You recorded this probably before Wake came to. A recording from during the events of that game. Now, we know that he was running that sort of mental care facility for artists with the intention of actually harnessing their power, positioning it just above the lake. But I just thought of something else during all that. If it is human consciousness that can actually uh, affect and bring these things into our reality, maybe he's right. I mean, I'd always thought that weirdness was brought into reality by the darkness itself, and that certainly still seems to be the case, but if it may have been created at some time in the past by myths and legends, 
then does that actually mean that the total strangeness on Earth would be increasing given time as these things feed into each other. It seems like here be dragons may actually work in reverse. Okay, we made it to the other side, but what does that do for us? Now, there is a door over this way, a bathroom, and another log. Reminder. All employees are required to report their hours at the end of each month. The Federal Bureau of Control maintains that time is not subjective, and hours passed on alternative planes cannot be claimed. Astral dives do not accumulate overtime compensation. Thank you for your attention. Well, I think that's totally stupid. This is why the FBC needs a union. And here we go. Alright, let's do this. Yep. Alright. You guys are floating around in there, which means I don't really want to be in there having to look up. Yeah, it's gonna be a doozy. Uh, how about we do exactly that? Yep. Yeah, oh, grenade! Grenade flyboys! Okay, never mind. Why didn't you just say so? Alright, this is going to be a lot of fun. You guys can dodge like the rest of them, but not if we're quick. Yep. Okay, we need to just join you on your level. In fact, you need to join us on our level. You have shields, but you're a regular dude. Yep, and smack. And smack. I don't know if you realize, but I'm kind of awesome. Oh, you're trying to chuck grenades at the guy who is wisely hiding in the control room. Ah, oh, you blocked the... You blocked the fire extinguisher I was going to use to wreck you. Alright, come with us. Hiss Ranger, airborne. Uh, this evolution, being so similar to the elevated, possibly indicates the Hiss can share permutations through a network, or perhaps osmosis. However, the fact that this development in Hiss Rangers has only been observed in investigations may indicate that an environmental factor is responsible. They could be responding to an altered item or other nat paranatural element found only in that sector. Or perhaps this is the natural progression of the Hiss Ranger phenotype. Not enough time has passed to determine a conclusive trajectory of development for each of the Hiss manifestations, assuming any trajectory exists. Science is fun. And you're open now. Get into the light then. It's not causing you to lose health, but it's certainly not good, and I think that's our warning. Oh no, can you imagine if Jesse were taken? We have to make expeditions inside to grab things, but oh, that's probably a document or something. We need to find some generators. Alright, let's go, go, go. Grab that. Door appearance. An excursion into the Ocean View Motel and Casino discovered a previously unseen door in the lobby hallway. This door featured a spiral-shaped marking. Similar to the other doors, it is locked and cannot be opened. So it appeared. Alice Wake, a person of interest in the Bright Falls AWE, and the former wife of missing author Alan Wake, a suspected para-utilitarian and something, contacted Agents Shaw and Dempsey of the investigation sector using the phone number given to her in 2010 in accordance with civilian outreach protocols. The call resulted in Mrs. Wake being brought into the oldest house for an in-person interview in 2017. We saw snippets of that in Alan Wake 2. The excursion into the Ocean View Motel occurred later that same day. Determining whether this was a basic synchronicity event, if Alice Wake is responsible for its appearance, or if the door itself relates to AWE-35 is paramount. She should be returned to the oldest house, possibly even taken into the motel itself, to confirm if any other changes occur. This, uh, this DLC is just so cool. This is how you do shared universes. Oh, uh, I'm just, uh Nothing. 
those little offices off to the side. Should I not be in here? Night Spring screenplay, page one. Uh, so maybe they did make the purchase in the end. Are you a... Uh... Nope, you're just a regular box. Note, this screenplay was found after the Bureau acquired the Night Springs television series and all its past episode scripts. It appears to be written by Alan Wake as part of an application to become one of the show's writers, which I think he did for a while. Over the threshold darkly. Host voiceover. It is only human nature to wish to control the forces around us, and even more so to possess them. But what happens when those forces are not ours to claim, or even of this world? What if they are the things you can discover in Night Springs? We are in a secret lab. The large sign on the wall reads, The Federal Bureau of Night Springs. I've told you several times, Director, it isn't ready. It's ready when I say it's ready, Director. But the being beyond the portal, we have no control over it. Yeah, that's just me doing the voices in the hope I get discovered. Ready for all Hollywood casting agencies. Just generators all over. But no shortage of documents. Hartman background. Dr. Emil Hartman is an academic psychotherapist that owned and operated a recovery center in Bright Falls, Washington, focused on the treatment of artists struggling with creative blocks and other mental disorders. Publicly, the center seemed unremarkable in its methods and purpose. Privately, however, Hartman was abusing his patients in order to utilize any Latin abilities they may possess with the aim of shaping something to his own benefit, which has earned him a Class II paracriminal designation. Ha <laughs> ha. Investigation has proven that Dr. Hartman's illegal endeavors were conducted alone. After being approached by the Bureau during the investigation, he displayed no remorse or intention to cease his actions. He was taken into custody, evaluated, and released some months later, having been deemed a negligible threat. His medical license had been permanently revoked. Oh, well, I guess you had to go grab him later. Yeah, it's my energy that's being sapped when I come in here. So I won't die, presumably. Also, sorry for the fire. Let's get out of here. It does seem to be working. Never mind! What? No! No, no, no! Can't do anything. No! Okay, yep, we need- okay, I see what this is. I see what this is! Activate lights to defeat the creature. Okay! Alright, so you turn these on. We need to lure you. That's how this works. Oh, but in the dark, in the dark, we won't regenerate. Oh, no, it's it's permanent. We can't pull it back out and pick and choose. Oh, look, a document. I'll, you know, I'll get to it later. Vending machine procedures, not on my mind right now. There they are. Come on, you wanna, uh, wanna come out of there? It's kind of urgent. All right, where were some of the other things? You're over there. Oh, there's gotta be something in that direction. You over here? Okay, fine. Up. Oh, we have our side, you have yours. It's not, it's not doing all it should. You can, you can briefly kill the lights. Was there something up there? I don't remember quite. Okay, I think I can see you over there. Man, just seeing that huge hulking twisted thing lurching towards me. There's gotta be, there's gotta be more places. We can put you somewhere, you can teleport, you can teleport, you can teleport. And I'm, I'm just draining, I can't move, I can't move, I'm dead. That insta-killed me. So as before, we need to only go out in expeditions, but only if we already know where we're going. I, I thought I was making a note of where these things are, but I guess it's not enough. And when you dim those lights, nowhere is safe. Oh, there's one over there. I see it. Oh, we got to stay, got to stay out of the areas you control. Uh, let's grab another one of these things. Being mindful 
but our energy is very, very spotty here. Uh, but if I can get a line on that thing... Oh, it's too far away. We need to get up high. Is it close enough? Now we're close enough. There we go. And the more of these areas we unlock, the more we can use... No! Come on. I can't gain altitude. I can't gain any altitude! Why not? And I can't heal either. There's another one over there. But the things are all the way back the other way. Alright, the floor is lava. That's how it is. You're right down there. Come on. All right. Yes. Good angle. There we go. You're losing. You're losing available area. That's good for us, I think. Ah, a button. Buttons are always good. Oh my God. I expected you to be a black twisted mess, not an actual, not an actual stretched human body. That was horrific. And only the briefest glimpse. I mean, like I said, you deserve it. I'm happy this happened to you, but I'm not happy that I have to deal with it now. Maybe now we can leave? Uh, to be honest, I was a little excited. What are you doing in investigations? Jesus, don't scare me like that, Winston. If you're talking right now, I can't hear you. It's a one-way system. Try to find an intercom. Oh my god, I hate him so much. Justice for Philip. Langston, it's me, Jesse. I know. I can see you on the monitors. The cameras in there haven't worked since we sealed that sector off a couple years back. Let me guess. You sealed it because of the monster guy. Wait, did you see Dr. Hartman? Jesus, I really wish you hadn't opened that firebreak. Okay, listen, you need to find Hartman and kill him before he gets out into the Bureau. That thing is a person? He was a person. We brought him here to study after he was, uh, oh, altered in an AWE. I forget the medical word for what happened, but now light physically hurts him. Do you have a flashlight? No. Uh, a lantern? Headlamp? Oh, yeah, flare gun. Oh, Christmas lights. You could wrap them around your- I don't have any of those things. Oh my god, Barry was a visionary! Okay. Uh, <laughs> that is so sure funny. I'll keep an eye on you from the Panopticon. This is kind of exciting, right? Maybe from where you're standing. Right, okay. Well, uh... Break a leg. Oh, why did I say that? Okay. This Hartman thing can't have gotten very far. Let's go flush him out. Hmm. Langston was right. This is kind of exciting. It's just nice to have someone to talk to, you know? Ever since I got put in charge of the Panopticon, people treat me different, like I'm crazy for wanting to work with altered items. People just don't understand the altered items like I do, you know? I don't want to brag, but it does take a very empathetic mind to connect with the items. Doesn't Still, want I don't to know brag. why people are making it so personal. <laughs> right. I mean, the teams in research handle paranatural materials every day, and no one thinks they're weird. Well, maybe that's not true. Darling is famous for being a bit out there, but when he's weird, it's charming. Altered items really aren't that frightening once you get to know them. If you figure out what they like or don't like, you know, what sets them off, then there's nothing to worry about. I guess at the end of the day, we're still just wild animals scared of our own shadows. We're supposed to be on the same team, but sometimes it feels like it's every department for themselves, like it's a race and we're all trying to be number one. If it is a race, though, I'd say Darling is a mile ahead of everyone else. He was Trench's golden boy for years, but that relationship has gotten pretty tense, or so I've heard through the grapevine. Not that I spread rumors, just, you know, people talk. Not me, though. I keep my nose to the grind. Too much work to do to focus on those kinds of things. I need to stay focused so I can get my work done and get home to feed Alfred. He's course, just gonna talk forever, isn't he? I was just wondering the same thing. Is there some reward if I stay here? very nice. Her name is Maria. She's older. She came to New York in the 50s to attend school and has been here ever since. She had a couple of kids. I met them at Thanksgiving. Oh my god, really? Very nice people. 
Anyway, she has a key to my apartment. Can we go over here? Uh, yes, but wow, the darkness becomes impenetrable very quickly. Rest in peace, voice actor. He may have a point, but I'm still not going to date him. So we have two different AWEs that we can move to. Uh, FRA Morrow AWE and Eagle Limited AWE. I guess let's check them out. I bet you get an achievement for listening to the whole thing, don't you? Like, it's gotta end at some point. One of these days, when there's extensive use of AI voice acting in games, I really do think that they're gonna pull that. They're going to have a character who literally talks forever. Or it'll be a common bug. And that'll probably be the second one. Wow, I actually was able to use that as a shield and he didn't see me. That was awesome. You're extremely tough. And some of you just aren't. It actually, does it maybe do some damage when your shields are removed? Maybe it's just the big boom making me think that. Hang on, we're actually going to need your... That's not what I meant to do. We're actually going to need the help of some lights to get it the stuff that's in here. Oh right, the vending machine. Uh, no known containment procedures. Testing in the investigation sector is currently ongoing. A vending machine. Its front covered in a faux wooden panel. Coin operated. Buttons for selecting food products. The item generates a variety of material, both edible and otherwise, in its rows of internal trays. Initial testing suggests the item reacts to the mind of the individual in close proximity and will produce whatever they subconsciously desire. Attempts to cause the item to create a living something have consistently failed. Okay, but failed how? The item was discovered in a nursing home in Alberta after a resident named Muriel called a local news station about a magic vending machine. The news story reported that the nursing home staff was purposely stocking the machine with distinctive food and objects as a way to raise resident spirit. The bureau response team encouraged this story while confiscating the item. Makes sense. I mean, if they gift you a cover-up, you might as well use it, right? There you go, let's just leave you here. Nope. Now, what have we got back here? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, but, oh, come on, no, you screwed up my ambush. I don't know what I destroyed behind you, but I'm glad I did. So many of you, come on. Yep, have some light. You may not be taken, but you certainly can behave like some if lights are employed ballistically. Oh, no, there's... There's you, there's you, there's you, there's you! Who else? Yep, yep! And... yeah, boop! Nope, uh, I can take you! I'm actually glad to have your shield back, but you don't retain them. It's always the last one that I end up seizing. Hey guys, wouldn't you know it? More reading. Oh no, new mission! Arcade cabinet procedures. Find and interact with the arcade item altered... Eh. A distance of 10 feet between the items suppresses their effect. Effect only triggers on physical contact. Items are a pair of game cabinets, originally designed for the games Shum and Shum 2. The games were manufactured by Bonko Entertainment, now to business. Despite being a popular arcade game in Japan during the late 80s and early 90s, no other shoom cabinets have been found by our investigators. When touching one of the items while it stands within 10 feet of its counterpart, 
the user's mind is transported to a version of their subjective reality that resembles a video game in logic and function. Events from their everyday lives become game-like sequences in which speed and, eff and efficacy are paramount. The brain enters a stroke-like state, as proven by EEG studies on users, which only ends after the user finishes their game, at which point they resume normal brain function and motor function. Polybius. Well, actually not Polybius, more like Tron. <laughs> All right, so we've got to clear this off of here. Wonder if getting closer makes it happen faster. And the device itself was also covered. Almost like it's trying to stop anyone who might try to uh, who might try to do this. Yep. I mean, it does. The darkness does throw up roadblocks. We know that. Come on now. And the controls are online. That ain't good. What happens if we grab that light and toss it down there? Well, that's not good. Is what you're saying... Oh, nope, this one's fine. Hidden location discovered. Oh my god! Oh my god! What? No, no, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Hidden location discovered, and that's one of five, indicating there have been hidden locations this entire time, and I haven't discovered a single one? Okay. I mean, I thought I was looking around somewhat thoroughly. All right, maybe, and this is dumb, but maybe we can use this to float down and through. Yeah, there we go. I actually have no idea if that would have hurt me or not, but he's out here somewhere. And there must be another, well, this must be another turntable. But without a light, one that isn't gonna be broken, we can't do anything. At least they're giving us the courtesy of a save. Oh, look at this. How convenient. Oh no, I can't use this? This looks very much like a light. And we can... Ooh, can we put something on top of here? If this is actually what you're supposed to do, I think it is! That's pretty sick. So can we... We guide this in some way. Maybe we're not. Maybe we're not supposed to yet. Maybe we use it over here first, and then we can use this. I see. That'll move you into the way, and then we can use it. I get it. I mean, it'd be nice if we could just use our telekinetic powers to move that light fixture, but hey, who am I to who am I to tell you how to do your job? Okay, so that's going to require a little bit of uh, a little bit of guesswork. you. You stop right there. I wonder how forgiving it'll be. The answer is just forgiving enough. There we are. Uh, but we will also have to free the other one. So come with us. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. And stop. Ah, oh, sick, it's working. All right, so now you can go over to, oops, and you can go over to there, and those doors will open, and you can go wherever you're needed. Oh, no, you're not, you're not another thing, you're just a box. Yeah, well, we got your stuff anyway. I think you're coming with us. like some of those hissing sounds I'm hearing. Damn it. You always... You, you gave that to me just so I would be carrying it down here so you could show me that. And there's our friend. Okay, uh, through here. Through here. Can we break that down? Yep. Uh, it really looks like we can break this down. There we go. 
And it actually took some doing, too. All right, uh, through the center, but we've got to be quick about it. No. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hopefully it can't physically reach us back here. Go, go, go! This thing is going to be crapping out all over the place and we cannot stay anywhere for too long. No. No! Go, go! Where are we taking this? I don't know where I'm taking this. Oh wait, there's a broken wall right here. Okay, uh, smash and smash. Hope I don't need this for anything. Come on, you with you with me, please. Just wait for our energy to recover. And yeah, boop. Oh, come on, yeah, boop is what I said. Get on out of here, you. And I take it that means you're gonna run off now. Yep. It's about turning on the lights, making sure you have nowhere to hide. That's the only thing that'll do it. And there's a control point right here. Oh, look at that turntable. We have to find you again. Don't think I forgot about the stuff under the stairs. Not to be confused with the people under the stairs. Actor for hire. Dearest Hollywood, have you ever wished you had an actor who could do it all? Who could be a man or woman, an adult or child, a dolphin or a Boston Terrier? Well, today is your lucky day. My name is Gareth Clemens, and I am the world's greatest actor. Not only do I have years of stage experience, but I'm an accomplished shapeshifter. Whether you need a misbehaving cat, ferocious wolfman, or swashbuckling pirate, or a debonair southern belle, I'm your man. Or am I? I'll be arriving in town May 11th, 1971, and will be available for meetings and auditions beginning on the 13th. See you in the movies. Given the fact that it's a dead letter, I'm assuming nothing came of that. Wow, this is creepy and already hiss all over. That that was the wrong thing. Hang on, good thing you didn't notice. Let's line up a headshot and kablammy. Wow, you guys really... Oh, there you go. There you are responding. There's somebody else down there who I didn't even see. Kablammy. As long as we can pick you off from a distance, we don't have to put ourselves in harm's way. That light is certainly helpful. And we're gonna need it because there's some darkness covering some exits down there. many cauterizing loops through and about. Wind and Windy Mitchell. Did he just say Mitchell? Was there a Mitchell at NASA? Dude, you know what? Never mind. I can't do this anymore. Just send this thing to the guys in research. Let them cut it up over there. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna cut you up, you pain in the ass. Spider time! <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny that this benign... I don't even want to say being, because for all we know, that's just somebody who's really committed to being as annoying as possible, and he actually brought this organization to its knees. Turn the table. Oh, how it turns. Table. Oh, boys, guys. Yep. And we're going to... No, 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 no. Oh, so the resonance is preventing me from properly taking you. Oh my god, and you have so much, you have so much everything. I'm hardly even able to damage you. Okay, let's use this to our advantage. And they're just all gonna spawn back in when we come back, right? Nope, you never left, good. There they are. You retreated to the same spot. Interesting behavior. Hey, you're not actually leaving my line of sight. 
Who else is out here? Music indicates someone else is out here. Really? Ow! Alright, let's break a U. There's gotta be more U around. Oh, you're preventing it from turning. I see. And there'll probably be a stage thing as it goes, maybe? Oh, oh it's a sniper! Alright. Hang on. I'll send something to you. Goodbye. And goodbye, and uh, you guys can dodge. Oh, no, you're the regular dudes. Alright, well, here, I'll send another flying guy after you. Come on, get close. Boom. <laughs> that is so funny. Yep. It's got to be just the right way to overwhelm you and make this work. But I know these things are about, and it's the distraction that always gets me. They're not dangerous on their own, but altogether, very much so. Right, backing up doesn't take me across to the control point anymore. Okay, lots of dangerous guys looking at me, and that's gotta change. Where's you at? There's that sniper. No, I'm sorry, I simply don't have time for your antics. You're very low. Seize. Now find that sniper for me, will you? You finished throwing stuff at me. You jerk. Uh, you're losing health so quickly. Stopped again. Which means another wave incoming. I really should just be using my throw on all of you. I'm getting more and more desperate to stop this thing. Before it was mold, now it's actually the hiss trying to slow my roll. Have we done it now? I think perhaps we have. Oh wow, now I realize all of that was just to bring your one working light around to here. Shifted offices, that's what you're calling this. Look, there is so much we have not seen. I'm gonna have to end this part soon. This is so much more than I bargained for. Hello. We can use you for something for sure. And the answer is right there. What about up here? I don't see any lights around. Uh, how convenient. Also, how convenient that they've been burning for, what, years? At least they're not friends? Although the hiss do seem to be infinite. Like whatever force had a hold on Hartman isn't mixing well with the his corruption. That's cool. I think we did call him the third thing. That's cool. And I'm actually really grateful. That's cool. It stopped playing the audio log when you were speaking. Okay. I'm just going to freestyle a bit. What else is new? My mother always said. Never talk to strangers. Always. Never. Never. Always. Never. Never. But isn't a stranger just someone you don't know? What if the only thing stopping a stranger from being a friend is that word? Stranger. Strange. Er. Strange like the noises you hear at night when there is no light and you cannot bite. Strange like a rubber duck that 
follows you around and makes you drop your coffee every time that it quacks because the noise scares you then you have to clean up the coffee while the duck stares at you and continues to quack quack Quack-a-doodle-doo. Anyway, that's going in my cringe compilation. I'm starting to think he really did need somebody to talk to. Maybe I should have stayed. A chain letter. <laughs> I remember these. Mom used to say they were evil. Hmm. Better do what it says. You know, just in case. There must be a photocopier around here. I don't think I have time for more side missions right now. Shaded Hartman. Dr. Hartman is the first Type 2 shaded individual to be examined alive by the Bureau, and has proven a valuable asset for our understanding of AO-10, aka the Shadow. Like all shaded individuals, the specimen is constantly shielded by, or produces, a shield of darkness that makes visual observation difficult. This also protects the specimen from harm. During testing, non-lethal ballistics proved ineffective against it. The specimen uses words and phrases that seem to originate from its previous life as a therapist. Some phrases have been identified as quotes from Dr. Hartman's book, The Creator's Dilemma. This seems to indicate the host's personality remains intact to some degree. For research purposes, Shaded Hartman was relocated to the Cauldron Lake Lodge replica Ooh, built for the AWE investigation. Researchers hope a familiar setting may trigger new behavior. No results thus far. There's a recreation down here? That's a huge deal, if true. Director Faden here. I need a ranger dispatched to my position. I don't think that's going to happen. Hello? Oh, hello! Okay. Uh, buddy, I didn't mean to actually ask for reinforcements. I don't think you can help here. Uh, this guy might be able to, though. Yep. Oh, no. Where'd you get off to? No! Oh, come on! Seriously, there do I just hate feeling this responsibility. Oh, but are you actually getting him? Huh. I mean, maybe there's, like, an achievement for getting you through alive. The distraction helps against these floaties. Yep, ow. Keeping you alive, the best thing is probably seize. That way, we'll have more distractions and less fire on you. Of course, we gotta focus on the big dudes. Nope, no, no, none of yous. Ah. There's just so much going on right now. Nope, get away. Die. You guys are proving to be a big help. Die. And die. All your juicy health. Wow, we actually came out of that better than when we started. That is cool. Now, I don't expect much after that whole wave. Are you still alive? I can't find you, that's for sure. And it is just... what? What's even the point of that? Oh, no, you're still alive! Yes, okay, cool, cool, cool. Oh man, I, I wish there was some way to heal you. But I'm just hoping- uh, you were actually hugely useful in that fight. I saw you doing damage. Screenplay page three. The director steps closer to the horrible entity. He reaches out with a steady hand. You are mine now, creature. I will return you to my facility and control your power. Sir, we don't know- The entity instead rushes forward and engulfs the director. 
He screams in pain as the scientist looks on and does nothing, like the coward that he is. I am not the one being examined. I am not the one locked inside a prison. Gradually, the director emerges from the entity. His once sparkling eyes are now empty and dull. The scientist rushes to him. Sir? Sir? We have to escape! We cannot. They are in control now. I got what I wanted. This is incredible cinema. Huh, you actually spawn in on me. Again, I'd actually kind of rather you didn't. I would like for you to stay here. Oh, wow, jeez, just how deep is this thing? Alright, I'm not quite sure where we're going now. Well, there, obviously. But is there more? Uh, what's the progression and what's the exploration? Out we go. What is this? Mold. Are any of you guys in here? I don't see you. But there's potentially more to discover. If we stand on this and hover up some more... Oh, here it is. A box. Let's get out of here. Oh, control point. Desperately needed. No friggin' way. I held out hope and my prayers were answered. They did do it. Uh, then again, maybe not all of them. It said they reached out in 1972. I don't want to move too close. You're, uh... You were just standing in the light. I saw you. You can't just sit there all dramatic waiting for your boss encounter. Hang on, I've got reading to do. From Morrow summary. A paranatural entity arrived on Earth by infiltrating the Apollo 14 lunar mission at an unknown point of their voyage to the Fra Morrow highlands of the moon. They... paranatural entities on the moon. It makes sense, but I hadn't even considered it. 32 hours after the return of Apollo 14 command module to Earth, the Bureau was contacted by someone, a White House senior official, and instructed to send a small team to the Johnson Space Center in Houston. At the base, the team examined the entity and carried out interviews with NASA staff. They learned that four astronauts had returned to Earth instead of three. Each human crew member was insistent that the mission left with four members, though they couldn't name the fourth when asked. The entity seemingly affected their memory to make its presence feel unremarkable. It's Penn Sylvester! The entity was transported to the oldest house for further investigation. An altercation between NASA security and the investigation team occurred upon their arrival. The person called to clarify the matter, though tensions remained high. Bureau jurisdiction and clearance should be defined more clearly with other federal agencies, and their partnership began the next year. This is so cool. I love the lore in this so much. It's just so good. Okay, we can push this button. That moves the catwalks, and therefore the light. We've got to move with it. How far will it go? It's over to here. Alright, we can't stop for anything. There is... Okay, there is a generator over there, but it's consumed by darkness. Once we do this, we're in it for the long haul. Oh no, you'll start moving that way. Hang on, let me in, let me in, let me in. You'll break. And where will you ultimately move to? You're moving on your own. No. Oh, it's an obstacle course. Please stop. Please stop. Thank you. Okay, uh, where, where can we place you? There's a thing over there, but that's not all we need, is it? One, two, three have to go in. Alright, so we gotta figure out how to control you the way we look at you out there. 
This is a really cool boss. We can't get anywhere near close enough. Push the farthest right button. Which way are you moving? That way. Towards the lander. Over to here. And you're moving once more. There's an intercom right there, presumably not for use just yet. And we can climb up over here. Fire you into that. No, come on. The lock-on thing was there. There's so much more that needs to be done. I knew there'd be a document here. Uh, AWE 7. The Apollo 14 entity, commonly known as Fra, underwent a series of physical examinations upon its admittance into the oldest house. The entity can speak, though its poor grasp of the English language makes any meaningful communication impossible. Interview material can be found here. Its physical form consists solely of the extravehicular mobility unit spacesuit used by the astronauts, the same model worn by the other crew. This could be an authentic EMU taken from one of the astronauts, though the suit does not bear any wearer's name, or one materialized through something conversion, or possibly corporealization. The suit itself is slightly damaged, which is likely due to the fact that the command module did not have a fourth seat for the entity to strap into during re-entry. The EMU is entirely hollow, and pieces can be removed, though this seems to agitate the entity. X-rays and spectrograph imaging have shown something-shaped outlines existing within the suit. For safety reasons, the entity will be contained in a secure cell until more information can be gathered. Oh boy. Alright, how are we doing this? First things first, we've got to retrieve the thing and just send it into any of them. And next, we've got to, we've got to burn off this and we've got to, maybe this... No, there's only one way we can go. Jeez. The note says where it goes. You'll get us that. Which will burn off. Now you're starting to move again. You into there, good. And over back to here. Okay, so this axe is our central point. And that was removed. We just need to get another of these things. Okay, so we'll ride you back. Uh, maybe we can give you a faceful while we're at it. No, it always goes across the center. Feel much safer up here, even if that's maybe not actually a good idea. Start moving to the left, thank you. And home free. That wall is not good. You are having a not fun time and I like that a lot. But where where do I find it? Where's the last where's the last? Well look, if green indicates I can remove it, maybe I just have to slap that one in that last space. Worth a shot. You'll move across the center, over the module. We can't climb inside. All right, let's do this. Move you to here. That's a thing now. And the doors are open. We can't, we can't power the lights on just yet. Would really hate for them to go off right here in this elevator, killing power and the lights. Maybe this is just what we need. And flushed out. Yeah, just exit through a closed door. That's cool. Blast doors. Don't stop much blasting, am I right? There. One last place for him to hide. And we get a new mission. Every time I try and tie up loose ends, it just gives me a million more. Well, obviously we're going to explore that chamber. 